Hello. Hi, everyone. Almost five o'clock. It is. <laughs> so you changed your background. It's okay. You're muted, but yeah. You I did because I'm visiting some friends. And so I didn't want the bridge behind me this time. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> it's good to see you all. Yeah, it's good to see you too. You all too. It's almost five o'clock. Oh, let's just say it's five o'clock because, yeah, it, it is because it is. Um, hey, it's Watch Me Work where we're going to get some work done and we're going to talk with you about your work and your creative process. We've been doing this class show thing for like a long time. <laughs> we first started out in the lobby of the public theater and then when COVID hit, we went online on Zoom and we we're still on Zoom because it's the place to be, I'm SLP. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna work for 20 minutes on our own work and then we're going to uh, invite you to ask me questions about your work and your creative process. While we don't have time to actually share our work, like read our work aloud or anything like that, um, we do have lots of time to talk about process and it can be any kind of work, painting, dancing, songwriting, novel writing, whatever. If you have any questions, Lolly is going to tell you how to get in touch. Go Lolly. Yeah, if you have questions and you're here in the Zoom with us, you can just use the reactions tab. Um, you can use the raise your hand function. Uh, the reactions tab will likely be at the bottom of your screen. So if you have any trouble accessing that, you can just let me know in the chat and I can help you out. And if you're watching live with us on HowlRound, you can ask your questions via the Public Theater's Twitter or Instagram account or via the Watch Me Work Twitter account, which is at Watch Me Work SLP with the hashtag HowlRound. That's hashtag H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. Fantastic. And yeah, before we get started, of course, we have to thank both the Public Theater and HowlRound for hosting us and making this world a little better. Okay, so we're going to start working. 20 minutes. Here we go. Boom.
Okie dokie. Time for questions. Anybody's got some? Looks like we have a question from AL. You should be able to unmute yourself now. How's that? Good. Yeah, I just want to thank this group because I was so stuck. Um, some of it, <laughs> some of it was um, stuff that I didn't even know was happening, but I was able to start writing songs again, and um, that was huge for me. Yeah. So um, I just wanted to let you know that uh, that last session was killer. And uh, and I really appreciated everybody's questions and your responses. And um, um, it it feels really good to get back on the get back on the path. So thanks all. Please, so pleased for you. Well done. You're doing it, right? <laughs> doing it. So glad. So glad. So you have like things to tell yourself, you know, to keep yourself. On the path, what you, you you have things. Still a work in progress. But uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to go into all the mind fucks that I do to myself. <laughs> but um, you know, one of the things that I've been dealing with is I've got all sorts of. I th I thought I'd die like a professional dilettante. This is like something that's always in my head because I'm mm -hmm. doing wood turning and I'm doing the textile work and I'm doing all these things and I'm feeling like, well, you really should be a writer. This is what you're supposed to be doing. So I've got all these little side, they're not hustles, they're just things that I do to try to to loosen myself up. Right. But sometimes to the detriment of not doing what I think I'm supposed to be doing. So, you know, when I'm talking about mind fucks, that's, you know, one of the things that I do is like, well, yay, I'm doing this and that and the other thing, but still. So I'm like I said, it's a work in progress. So no, I don't, I I do need mantras. I do need to develop some and work on them and actually repeat them and use them. So that that's 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 the next step. Congratulations. Really happy. Thanks very much. We're all very happy for you. Thank you. Well done. Thanks so much. <laughs> we are going to move to Larry. You should be able to unmute. I can. I'm, I am working on, first of all, hi. Hi, <laughs> uh, hi everyone. Thanks for being here. Um, I am working on editing and I'm just, uh, I'm curious about like uh, what your editing process is like. I'm finding myself getting a little bit in rabbit holes and in the weeds and all those metaphors where the the task at hand is to you know i've kind of created a you know i think you may remember i have tons and tons of material i have a new outline i'm trying not to write more and just plug what i have into the outline but of course that takes some rewiring and macgyvering and things like that and i enjoy it like i'm enjoying it but what I find is, is that I'm like, I feel like I've been working on this, like opening five pages for a week. <laughs> um, right. And just wondering if you have like, a, you know, a thoughts about the process of editing um, and kind of keeping yourself on track or should I just follow the enjoyment? And if it's taking me a week, to work on five pages, should I not care? Right, 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 right. Well, I think both. It's gonna mm -hmm. sound like both because you know you so so should you if it takes you a week and you've been working on five pages, should you not care? Yes, and it sounds like you've done that already. Yeah, yeah. So now, so you're because you're asking the question of, you know, do we have any tips to to help you keep on track? Then yes. So, so you, you've enjoyed yourself 
for, for a week. And now you can say, good job. I'll come back to it in the next rewrite. You know what I mean? Next draft. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go forward now and keeping yourself to that kind of schedule, some kind of schedule. So, and you can make it up, you know, you can say, I'm going to spend three days on each, you know, s section, if you will, or, or just make something up for yourself, but um, encourage yourself to leave it and go to the next, the next beat. Cause you're going to have a rewrite after this one, you know? Do you keep like, um, um, I, I think a lot of it also is I have a fear, like I'm going to lose, I'm not going to retain or remember what I think it is I want to do. Um, and then I, you know, then I can get, you know, then I can, you know, spend, lose an hour just like trying to write down the notes of the things that I want to come back to and address. Like, I just have this always way of it just making the work expand mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. faster than I can execute right. it. You right. know, like I, like my to-do list, which is part of what the play is about, of course, but my to-do list is always getting bigger as I write. How, how do you write? So when you, you, you stop to write out the list of things that you think you're going to forget, how do you notate those things? Uh, I have just these like Apple notes that I have. Where, where you type them and with your, like this? Yeah, yeah. On a, on a, on a piece of, like on the screen? Yes. Great. How about using, you know, can't show you that one. Let's see, you know. Handwritten. Oh, Mm-hmm. Small. You know, so you so you're allowed. Uh -huh. This is play a game. I'm allowed to write remind myself of something. Uh -huh. I'm gonna write it by hand on a post-it note. And I can have a notebook. You know, I you can get yourself a notebook. Look at all I have like a million of these. You know, I can get myself a notebook, you know, and put these post-its in them so they can stay organized. But if I have something that I think I need to remember. I'm going to write it by hand on a post-it note. So learn, train yourself to think, you know, Jane has a dog. I got to remember that for the next draft. You know, Jane has a dog. It's a Labradoodle. That's deaf. <laughs> I'm laughing. I'm laughing because one of my characters is a compulsive list taker and her costume is actually all post-it notes. There Just you all go. She there wears you go. So, so yeah right okay Got so you. do you see how that's gonna just just limit limit yourself you know what i mean it's like it's like you know for those of us who like coffee you know i love drinking coffee well i'm not gonna drink like 27 million cups of coffee you know because that's not gonna be helpful right i'll if i you know i'll limit myself I'll drink two that's that's good because that's gonna keep me on the track of what i really want to do which is i want to get my work done I'm supposed to eat using small plates. So this metaphor is pretty consistent in my life. So But how does how did was that affect? I mean, does that make sense? Did that make sense? Totally, totally. Because digitally it's very easy to yeah. I'm yeah, with you. Yeah, yeah. And if you have a little post-it, then you just and and plus you 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 all also the underlying, maybe the underlying issue, if you will, is the fear factor, you yeah. know. Sure. It, it, it's it's not so much the importance of your note that you're making, but it's a fear. I, I'm afraid that I might not remember what I want to remember to put in. That's very important, you know, and you're it's the, so you have to build your confidence. I'm con you can also say to yourself, I'm confident that I'm going to remember the things that are important. I mean, because can you remember everything that happened since you were, you know, first born? No. No. Okay. okay. But, but my, my guess is that you, you remember important things yes. like, you know, your name and where your parents, you know, who your parents are, and they, you know, you remember the important things to keep you on track. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, so we were, I'm confident that I'm going to remember the important things for my novel and these post-it notes in a notebook are going to get to help me. You know what I mean? So you just change. So give yourself a, a, a new mantra or add this to your, your, your list of, positive things that you're going to start telling yourself i'm confident that i'm going to remember the important things for my novel these post-its are going to help me 
get a color that you like, you know, look, these are fun. These are colors that I like, you know, yay. You don't have to get the yellow, basic yellow and the black note, but get if you, unless you love yellow and black, but hooray. Yeah, there's MC, hooray. That's a hooray color. <laughs> for, me. for me, you know, I, I like that color. Uh, you know what I mean? So it's like, I, I post it. Okay. Is that helpful? Perfect. All right, Larry, there, you there you go. Thank you. Great question. Great question. Thank you. Thanks, Larry. You should be able to unmute yourself. Cool. Hello. Hey, everybody. Tim. How you doing? How are you, SLP? All right. Um, Good to see you. Quick, more on a technical question. Um, when you're trying to, when you're trying to shape a story, when you're trying to shape a play, mm -hmm. um, do you try to? How should I put this? Do you try to fit the characters to the plot or the plot to the characters or neither or both? Both. <laughs> the answer, it's, the answer, it's like it's going to be both. It's a both day. That's great. Yeah. Light is a particle and a wave. You know, I mean, that's physics, you know. Um, mm -hmm. right. <laughs> oh, that's it. That's all I know about physics. No, but, um, right. you know, character is plot and plot is character and it's the same. So, your plot's going to tell you who the character is and your character is going to tell you who the plot is. You know, I mean, think of like, I don't know, let's think of a play that we both, Hamlet, you know, Hamlet. Right. I mean, you don't I know do. it personally, but you know. <laughs> I, okay. If he had been a really like decisive guy, like the Scottish guy, it, we wouldn't have had Hamlet. Cause he'd be like, Oh, right. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to get revenge. Boom. End of play. Oh, okay. Well, that's it. Right. But because he was like, yeah, I'm not sure. Right. So then we get the whole play. Right. So right. then yeah, yeah, I'm not sure is part of his character, but it also is part of the plot. The is and the mm -hmm. seems and what are we doing here? And should we be here at all? That kind of thing. Right. Right. I had a teacher once who said, if Hamlet goes back to law school, you don't have to play. Wittenberg, right? Yeah, well, right, yeah. Right, yeah, if he goes so. back to law school, right, right, then you don't have a play, right? You don't have a play, and it's like, can I, folks, you know? Or, or um, you have another play, and it's boring. <laughs> law school. It's like, ah, oh, he's a lawyer, and it's like, oh shit, right, right, right. But there, but there, that's exactly it. Okay, so, so I, I find it helpful to think of what does my character want. Or what do my characters right. want? What do they want? What are they trying to get? You know, what are they, what are they, and, and what are their problems? Like, you know, characters, we love characters that have like problems. I mean, mm -hmm. they're, they're, for Hamlet, we're perfect. He's the golden boy. He does everything right. Oh, so boring. But because he has right. all these problems, you know, we're mm -hmm. interested. In him. So what are your characters' problems and what do they want? And what do they think they need that's going to fix their problems? You know, you see what I mean? That's the plot. You know, if they think they need chocolate cake to fix their problems. They're probably going to your store. Your play is probably going to involve a bakery or something. Right. Gotcha. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. But what the characters want is really helpful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Good question. Timothy. Thanks. MC, hello. Hello. Hey, MC. Hey, good to see you all. Hey. Um, I, I heard somebody say, when you're writing a story, the writer is having a conversation with the reader. And I'm wondering whether that is, I know there's no right or wrong answer, but it is, is it helpful when you're generating? And, um, you know, uh, I'm paraphrasing someone, it might be Carmen Maria Machado, but the writer haunts the story. 
the story haunts the reader and then the writer and reader have haunt each other <laughs> so it's i mean do you think that's helpful there's a whole lot of haunting going on um if, yes. i mean if 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 it's helpful to you if it's helpful to you if it's helpful to the person who said it you know right yeah. and right. it's totally helpful and a great thing to say i personally don't understand it so i'm kind of going uh, you know but i mean so if someone said that to me i i'd have to sit there and try to figure out what they meant so yeah. just, just hearing it like that um i'd go huh uh so so but my maybe more to the point was is it helpful to you and how is it helpful to you if so oh, I, I knew you turned it off <laughs> but that's a good girlfriend I yeah know. Um, I don't know I mean sometimes I think oh I don't really want to be haunted by the reader because there's so many people out there and they're all different from me and they could just stifle what I'm trying to write because then I'm afraid of all those things where you you take a wrong step and it's a landmine and then you know you've you've insulted someone probably wow. rightfully you get canceled you know am I entitled am I allowed to write this even though you know so yeah. then I kind of want the potential reader or the person who's protesting but hasn't really read the book to just like shut up and get out yeah yeah okay so so let's put that let's put that wonderful piece of advice aside okay it's and it's awesome and it's helpful but it's not working for us you and yeah. me right now yeah. okay how, so what, what how Ooh. else do you, how what's another way to say that what's another way to understand the process that would be helpful to you hmm I'm going to call everyone out there to help me with this, please. Oh, um, I'm just, I'm just going to say sometimes I feel like I'm haunted by the characters. I, 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 I mean, we, we, what I, what I miss about that, I'll be, you know, paraphrase quotation is I've, I've where, where are the characters, you know, or the story, so the characters, the characters, it's like there, there's people who are hanging around my apartment you know, or, or outside the hallway, waiting to get in, wanting to be, if it's a play on stage, if it's a novel in a book, you know, if it's a film, you know, on screen, you know, in a script that's going to be on screen, you know, or a TV show. Yeah, when I saw your plays for the plague year, and you wanted to call on the elders, and then James Baldwin showed up, and then yeah. everyone showed up. And so, actually, I think that's more useful to me to think about that i'm just like okay i'm stuck here i'm gonna call and i'm gonna ask you know the fucking last empress with the bound feet to come on here and give me some advice about what was going on and how to be the the boss lady in like 1800s or something uh, yeah yeah do you know her name I mean, you don't have to tell us but you do you know her name yeah it's Susie. okay bad accent i think no perfect no i'm not i'm not judging your accent <laughs> the thing is it's great if you because if you know her name you can call her she'll show she's already showing up she's showing up for you yeah just let her talk she's got a lot to say it, it you know it might not all fit on keep you on track it's okay if it's a first draft or a second draft or whatever let it let her be expansive you okay. know what I mean? And yeah. then you can you can sort of shape it in the second draft or the, the third draft or whatever. Let yeah. her talk. Let her haunt you. I, I like for characters to hang around or you can say visited or possessed. Mm -hmm. you know? Hang out. They you you entertain them. Entertain her. What does she eat? Might she like some, I don't know, we were talking about coffee earlier or raspberry sorbet or something. Yeah. Oh, coffee. Like coffee would be for barbarians she's a oh. tea lady all well i didn't want to presume <laughs> but there you go. okay so what might be her favorite kind of tea or an approximation of her favorite tea that you can procure at whatever yeah. you buy tea you can have some tea you can be having tea with her and you can entertain her presence oh. and have her talk to you yeah well she always comes yeah. 
I think in my experience, the audience comes later. Okay. Uh, that's in my experience. But again, this wonderful writer who gave you awesome advice. If it works for them, hey, good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to call on. Yeah. She's this last Empress is pretty busy and she always brings her opium pipe. So now that's my kind of Empress. <laughs> Things are over in five. Okay, girl. All right. Okay. Cool. Very cool. I'm busy entertaining. Thank there you. you. Go. There you go. Thank, Thank you. you. Great question. Thanks. Great question. We mm -hmm. can do that with any of our characters. And if you don't know their names, call them something that you think is their name. And they can reveal their name, you know, to you at a later date. You know what I mean? They are not, they're, they, I can, in my experience, they, I can assure you, they are not going to cancel you if you get their name wrong, if you mispronounce their name, if you get their gender wrong uh, at, for the jump, you're, because they are, they are happy, they are thrilled that you are turning your direction, your artistic eye, eye, eye self in their direction and inviting them into the world again, back into the world, which is what we do. We're portals for them. And, and we'll get it right if we keep working on it. You know, there's so many things that I, you know, I wrote drafts and drafts and drafts of things and I wasn't getting it right. And finally I got it right and it flowed right. So, you know, but in the first couple of drafts I was getting it all wrong. The character didn't care. They appreciated that I was on the path, you know? So, so yeah, great job, MC. Sounds like a wonderful thing you're writing. Opium pipe girl. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think Lynn is uh doing this. Hi, Lynn. Uh, you should be able to unmute. Hmm. Hold on. Let me see. I'm going to try again, Lynn. There. Can there. you hear me? Yes. Uh, a question about, um, you know, calling on people. I mean, I'd love to meet the Empress and, and stuff like I, I mean, seriously, seriously. Uh, but there's a difference between ghosts and and calling on them to appear you don't want to call on a ghost of, of something am i right you know what i mean uh, i know what i mean but i can't articulate uh, it in a ghost way. meaning uh someone who has uh someone you know who has lived and recently died no. Yes, yes, somebody who has passed. So when you call on your characters, the, the Empress specifically, I mean, she's, you know, you're not calling on a ghost of her, you're calling on the whole of her. I mean, this is the imagination of the, the creator's imagination, in a sense. What's the difference? I don't understand the difference. I mean, say you have a say one of you, one someone's parent one of someone's parents have passed and they want to include them in a story right right so they would call on the parent who who passed right right and that would that i mean ghost i i, I don't know they would call on 
the person. I, I don't know if I would call him a ghost. You know, I just say right. the person. The person, my grandmother, my you know, my dad. You know, something. So, yeah, you can do that. I I would say sure. I, again, I I don't think the the people, the entities, the spirits, the characters, the whatever you call them, the presences that want to be in your work. Yes. Stage novels, screenplays, whatever they are. I believe that they are free of the judgments and rules that we, in especially in recent times, have been encouraged to embrace. The canceling, the judgment, the you got my name wrong, the I don't identify as such. I, I really feel that people are, there, there's a lot more, they, they long to be included in our stories. Yes. So I, I just give that to people because there's a lot of, well, I'm, I don't know if I'm, I wasn't born in that neighborhood. So I don't know if I'm right to tell the story. If you're hearing something talking in your head, respectfully go forward and, and write it. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and if, if later on you feel like, well, okay, I don't want to take it any further because I don't know if I want to bring the, that's fine. But the self-censorship that is going on in the mind of the artist these days is is very unfortunate yes um to to create we have to uh open ourselves up really wide you know to, i mean to be, maybe to be an accountant you have to open yourself up really wide too i don't know i'm not an accountant but i know that to be an artist you have to open up really wide and so a lot of stuff gets in and if a lot of that stuff is saying you're only allowed to do this, like this, you mm -hmm. know, you're only allowed to, for example, you're uh, Susan like, for SOP, you're only allowed to write plays like Top Dog Underdog. Or or more plays like the first play you wrote back in 1990. You, you see, that's culture, society putting me in a box. Well, it's cutting your balls off, really. Well, right. And I have very big balls, so that would be a shame. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and I'm sure that's appropriate in some context, but here we are. Um, but that, and that's the, th that's, that's the, that's the, that's exactly it. So I can't blame culture for cutting my balls off because I'm the one who's, who's censoring myself. So at some point I have to say, you know what, I'm going to let, if, if I hear the voice of, you know, uh, whomever speaking to me you know that guy what's his name um I was watching a documentary recently on man I hope I get his name right Bill Styron anyway somebody who wrote the confessions of Nat Turner you know oh yes, yes. oh how could he write that uh, I don't know I don't know I don't know okay I don't know what I think about that but I do know that later on in his career he wrote Sophie's Choice Mm -hmm. so then it got very when I heard oh right he wrote Sophie's Choice too man that man went out went out there right because he was neither Sophie nor Nat Shakespeare was neither he could have been Lear or Hamlet but he wasn't both of them right so we got to give ourselves permission and proceed with Con with so much respect that's the thing mm -hmm. we can't just be giving ourselves permission to do whatever we got to give ourselves permission and be very very respectful and very, very mindful and that's the thing that we often forget when we say oh i should just write anything i want well no no it's not that it's it's a combination of being very respectful uh and answering the call of the spirit so it's a little more nuanced you know I was so uh, uh, no. I was so glad that you mentioned no the audience comes later because many times uh, people write for an audience rather than for the experience the creative experience so just letting you know yeah. the creative process happen yeah yeah I had a writer recently ask me. Uh, you know, uh, what, what trends should I write about for my next work? But trend, and I'm like, huh, what trends should I write about? I'm like, Ooh, yeah. I, I don't know if I can answer that, you know, you, you know, but they were thinking, what will, what does the marketplace want? I, I'll, I'll write about that. 
you know i'm thinking yeah i i i that's that might be a very valid question i just that's i don't know i don't know you know um yeah. but again that's a choice and we each you know get our work done in whatever way is going to work for us i you know i i know we don't pick up your plays and stuff like that but i remember seeing the one i thought I was my, my mind went crazy when I saw a bowling alley on on the stage in that play, and I thought, "Wow, what? Wow! I love this woman. She'll put a bowling alley on the stage." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. it's like it blew my mind. It was great. You know. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Lynn. Uh, we have time for one more question. Looks like we have a question for you, SLP, in the chat, which is how or will you write up some of your writing advice? Uh, I'm sorry, what is it? What is it? What did you say? I, I know it's in the chat, but I didn't hear you when you it said I don't have, it in the chat. Have or will you write up some of your writing advice? Will I write up some of my writing advice? Like me, write it up? <laughs> Um, oh, publish. Oh, we're working on getting some of these Watch Me works um, transcribed and published. That would be the best way. Um, yes. And some of my favorite books to read are books about the creative process, um, which is talking about, what's one of them I have? What is it called? Mason Curry, Daily Rituals. That's a good one. It's on the shelf. Um, Really fun just to read about. And then he had, he just came out with one called Daily, not he just, didn't just come out, came out a couple of years ago, Daily Rituals, Women at Work. It's just fun to read about how other people, as he says, get the job done. You know, those are two good books. And there are hundreds of other books, Bird by Bird, Anthony Lamont, um, Ray Bradbury has a book, Zen, The Art of Writing, I think it's called. Um, there's a wonderful collection, Claudia Tate, Black Women Writers at Work. I go on and on. Love reading books about writing and the creative process. Um, and uh, yeah, oh, definitely. I'm compiling these things. Thank you for asking. Thank you. Oh, free play. What's free play about? I want to click in about improv. Al, yeah, it's um, it's a, a book written by I think a violinist, um, just about how th there used to be a lot of books about um, improv and golf. Um, I the names escape me, but it's it's they were all kind of about you know the game of golf equals the game of life. But um, free play is just about uh, it's by a no way. I realized, wait, I, yeah, I have it right here. yeah, 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 go ahead. Tell, tell everybody about it. It's great. It's great. Well, it's, it's been a while since reading it, but it's just stuck in my mind about just, just being able to, and I should, I think what I'm telling myself is that I better reread it ah. because it's one of these great books that really keep you going. Um, mm -hmm. And Linda Berry's uh, work, uh, what it is. Um, I mean, she's written a whole bunch of these things and she, she illustrates everything as she goes along, but she right. makes you feel like you can do anything. Right. Um, and I don't know if anybody's ever heard her speak, but I remember going to hear her at the Strand. Oh. And I think that the very first song, I don't know if she was singing Coal Miner's Daughter, but she sang it loudly and poorly. And uh -huh. she said, now that I've done this, I can talk to you. 
Um, <laughs> so it it just felt great to know that, you know, Linda, somebody like Linda Berry can also, you know, whether it's making funny faces on a Zoom uh -huh. or, you know, or singing whatever she was singing. But, you know, just, just these amazing ways to loosen yourself up when you're stuck. And interestingly enough, I hadn't, you know, I like deliberately ignored these books <laughs> that are so good for you. So that's the next project. That's really good. That's really good. Great things to think about. And again, not using these books as a substitute to doing your own work, but as like a just a, a daily sort of friend to help you and encourage you along, you know? Definitely. Great. Linda Berry syllabus is one of Linda Berry's. I love her. Yeah. She's an illust she's she's an illustrator. Yeah, I love her work. Cool. Cool. We've got some other book recs in the chat as well. So check those out, folks. Awesome. Any last questions or thoughts? All right. Well, we will be back here every Monday in August. All those sign-up sheets are on the website. So please sign up, please spread the word. Um, we'd love to, to have you all for this month. <laughs> Thank you. Have a happy rest of your day. See y'all. Thanks, Lolly.